Today is a special day. 10 years ago, I graduated high school. This was my high school graduation song, and I hated it, but we're singing it in honor of that. When you said that you were spent, don't you understand that I'm never changing who I am. It's time to begin. This is what I wish, and truly in my heart, this is my graduation song. I am in a nostalgic mood today and I thought that is the perfect time to talk about my tattoos <laughs> because it's been 10 years since I graduated high school and it's been over six years since I got my last tattoo. So I got 11 tattoos in about two years and haven't gotten any since. <laughs> Number one, this is my first tattoo that I ever got. A lot of people think it's the tree of life. Similar, but it is actually the white tree of Gondor. <laughs> you know, has the symbolization of hope and kind of the return of the king. Uh, you know, it was dead for years and years and years, decades until Aragorn came back and then he found the sapling with Gandalf and then brought it back and it was kind of a symbol of the return of the king and everything being okay. I originally wanted the inscription on the one ring um, the one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness find them. That whole thing that was like in Elvish, dark Elvish. I originally wanted that around my arm as an armband, but I was told my arm was too skinny. So I got the White Tree of Gondor instead. <laughs> but I was very set on a Lord of the Rings tattoo being my first tattoo. My second tattoo. When I got my first tattoo, I said, I'm only ever going to get black and white tattoos. And then for my second tattoo, my tattoo artist said, this would look better in color. And then I got color. <laughs> my second tattoo is an origami crane. So I am part Japanese. Uh, my dad was born in Japan. And for as long as I can remember, we've had the tradition of uh, folding origami cranes with uh, out of money to give to people on weddings, birthdays, just... My dad taught me how to fold the origami crane, taught me how to do it with money, and that's kind of just been a tradition in my family. And it does symbolize, you know, hope and healing. There's a legend, the legend of a thousand paper cranes, that if you fold a thousand paper cranes, you're granted a wish. And I think that's where the hope and the healing of cranes are. So that's what my family does for weddings. We always fold two $50 bills into paper cranes to give them as a gift. And that's why I got an origami crane to, I guess, represent that part of my life. My third tattoo, I went a little crazy, got a little bit bigger, got a little bit more comfortable with tattooing. So this is my third tattoo. If you're a fan of Studio uh, Studio Ghibli, I always say that wrong, uh, basically Miyazaki films. So this is No Face from Spirited Away. People think he's creepy. I thought he was cute. I've always thought he's cute. He does occasionally eat people, but I love him. <laughs> and I thought he looked really cool. And this is kind of the beginning. The crane was the beginning of getting flowers around my tattoos. You can see I, I have that on a lot of my tattoos. I got him with a little bit of smile, like a little smile though, so people wouldn't think he was creepy. But Spirited Away is one of my favorite films. I'm not really a big fan of anime. It's really just Miyazaki films that I love, I cherish. So No Face was my third tattoo. Gonna have to take my shoes off for this one. My fourth tattoo was on my foot. And it is Harry Potter, because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. So, 
Uh, the winged key from the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone when they're going through the separate chambers to get to the Sorcerer's Stone and they have to get on the broom and find the key that unlocks the door. And then instead of the normal key head, I got the Deathly Hallow symbol on top of it because I wanted the Deathly Hallow symbol, but I didn't want to get just the Deathly Hallow symbol, so I attached it to the top of the flying key. My fifth tattoo, oh my fifth, not tenth, fifth tattoo, is another Lord of the Rings tattoo. It is... basically an interpretation of Bag End, where Bilbo lives, lived, and Frodo. I thought it looked cool, and I wanted a black and white tattoo on this arm because I had a black and, black and white, black and gray tattoo on this arm because I had a black tattoo on this arm. So uh, yeah, I thought it looked cool. My sixth tattoo is Fox phoenix from harry potter but yeah you know phoenixes rise from the ashes when they die um i wanted a colorful tattoo i was feeling very confident in my ability to handle pain so i got my my ribs done that is my fifth tattoo number seven i think has the least meaning. This, this, this one has absolutely no meaning. It is a flamingo. It was, my tattoo artist was at a tattoo convention and uh, had it already drawn up and I got it and that's it. <laughs> All right, so number eight is the one that I always forget about because it's in, I can't see it. <laughs> There's two on my back that I just forget about. But number eight is So those are Kodomas, tree spirits. They are from another Miyazaki film called Princess Mononoke, more anime. I thought they were cute, so I got them. People think they look creepy, I think they look cute. Maybe it's me. Continuing with tattoos that I can't see. <laughs> The other one on my back, uh, that is Reap a Cheap from the Chronicles of Narnia. It's a mouse with a sword. That's about it. <laughs> Baby Groot is up next. The Baby Groot tattoo is quite simple. I went and I saw Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in theaters with some friends, and I saw Baby Groot, and I fell in love with him, and I talked about getting him as a tattoo. I thought it would be really fun. I kind of said it as a joke, and then my tattoo artist <laughs> ended up having an opening and I just messaged him and said I wanted a baby group tattoo of him waving. And yeah, I went and got it like two days after I saw the movie. That was probably my most impulsive one. <laughs> There's no reason. I thought he was cute. Uh, he made me laugh. He's fucking adorable. And he's forever on my body now, so. And last, but certainly not least, because it was the most painful tattoo I've ever gotten, I have... Aslan. From the Chronicles of Narnia. This one was another one. So I only had two tattoos that took more than one session, which are my two rib tattoos, which are also my biggest, so that makes sense. But uh, yeah, I got Aslan. Oh man, it was actually, yeah, I got Aslan because I wanted a lion, and Aslan is a lion in Chronicles of Narnia. This one I remember being my most painful because when I went back for my second session, it was only three days after I'd gotten this uh, group done, so I sat for like 
a six hour session for Groot. And then three days later, while he was still healing, I went back and I got, I think this was another like six hour session on my ribs to finish it. And I think that one hurt more just because like my body was still recovering from what I did to it three days ago. So that one hurt like a bitch. Uh, I think that brings my count to two Lord of the Rings tattoos, two Harry Potter tattoos, two Narnia tattoos, two anime Miyazaki tattoos, one Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy tattoo, one flamingo, and one origami crane. And that is my tattoos. As they went on, they became more and more about what I just thought looked cool and colorful and less and less about any more deep meaning. I think that's pretty normal with a lot of people though. You get your first couple tattoos and they have this huge meaning to you and then you're just like, I want cool shit on my body. And I love them. I have absolutely no regrets. I honestly do want more. I'm planning on getting more. I need to get at least a dragon from the Inheritance Cycle Aragon series. I want to get a dragon desperately. I've wanted a dragon going up my back for a really long time. And then eventually I will probably also get a tattoo to honor Elrond. And then besides that, I, I don't know. I really, I just really like the way tattoos look. I really like the way they look on me. I just, I like them, so. <laughs> I was originally just gonna have a video talking about my tattoos, but I thought I could also do a sunrise hike tomorrow because I gotta show you something pretty. <laughs> We're going to resume this video tomorrow morning around 3 a.m. when I go hiking on the beach for sunrise. And the next time you see me, I am going to be tired and it is going to be dark. Yay! Good morning. Ugh. I thought it was filming. <laughs> so this is Hole in the Wall uh, from Rialto Beach. You know, disappointing sunrise, but this is a place where you can only get at low tide. Like you have to come here at low tide in order to access this side of the wall. So I'd recommend hiking out about an hour, hour and a half before low tide just to make sure you're not like r racing against the tide to get back. Cause then you have time to explore, there's tide pools, it's pretty. But yeah, I mean, there's not much else. <laughs> Thanks for watching, <laughs> whatever this ended up being. <laughs> I'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs>